I just finished this huge 96 page handmade journal and I'm getting ready to start a new one so I thought I would bring you along into my process for starting a new journal. This is Modern Trigonometry. It's another handmade journal by Sketchbook Company. They are no longer making these unfortunately but I have hoarded a lot before they went out of business. Let me just say that. But you can always find handmade journals, handmade sketchbooks on Etsy is a great place to look for them. Especially if you have a certain paper that you like, you can search for the paper, you can search for the size, you can even search for the stitching. Some are bound Cop Coptic, Copic bound. Um, this one is bound in a book, which I love. I love antique books. So using or repurposing a book is right up my alley. So I love this. And I was a little bit of a book nerd in school. So trigonometry fits me great. <laughs> so here's what I did on most of my sketchbooks in the beginning here, the first page, I usually have art supplies in it because it's something that I'm familiar with. I don't have the pressure of creating something beautiful on the front cover and it's just something that I like to do. So in this sketchbook, which is my second handmade sketchbook here, I've put my favorite supplies. So I've got my favorite mechanical pencil here. I've got my Da Vinci brush here. I've got my little Raven brush from Jackson's here. And then I've got my Trekel here. And then one of them is pink clay. My own color is going to go here. I don't know what color is going there yet. And then I have the word sketchbook right here. So that's my layout. I wanted to include my favorite things as of right now. So I wanted to tell you how I did the word sketchbook. I just printed it out on my printer. I just opened up like a Word document and typed out sketchbook. And then I went through typefaces to just kind of see what I liked. This book here is kind of all caps and very narrow letters. So I thought it might look nice to have sketchbook in that kind of same lettering. And all I do is this is handmade graphite paper. If you have a graphite stick or like say a 4B or 6B pencil, just go over it really hard and then I take a paper towel and I smooth it out and do this outside if possible because this is really dusty and dirty and then I do it again all over with my pencil and then I smooth it out again with paper towel and then it's really ready to go. This is just a piece of tracing paper and I fold it so that the graphite side still has tracing paper here. That way it doesn't get all over my cabinet or anything like that. When you are using this, so I put this down first, I lined it up with my ruler and I found the position and then I just taped it down. And then you wanna make sure that this paper, you can see on this side, it looks very light. On this side, it's graphite. So the graphite side is what goes down. So I just push it down there like that and then I take my mechanical pencil, which has a really fine lead, and I hand trace every little single letter on there. It takes a while, but I have pretty lettering at the end. Now you don't want to press so hard that you're denting the paper, because remember it's watercolor paper, and you want the watercolor to go everywhere. You don't want to see this harsh um, edge on top of your letter. So sketch kind of lightly. And before you remove the tape, Lift this up, check your lettering, and then if you're missing anything, just put your paper back down because remember this, you can't see through, so I always double check first. And then this, you just keep reusing. And you'll know when it starts to need more graphite because your lines are really, really light or else you're missing half of your lines. And that just means re-graphite it again and rub it with a paper towel and you're ready to go. It's my favorite trick. And then what I did was I decided to ink around my letters here. I am using the Unipin Fine Line Marker. This is an 01 in light gray. This set comes with three different colors. Let me show you that. It comes with two light grays, two medium grays, and two blacks. Each color has a 0 0.1 
and a 0 0.5. And I just love this set. You can find all the supplies I'm using in the description box below. Because I just finished my sketchbook too, I shared with you my five favorite colors in for August. And I thought it would be nice to kind of start my sketchbook with these same colors. So I'm gonna just find mixes in here and that's what color I'm gonna do, the letters and the brushes. So I'm not being like, oh, these are all black handled brushes, I have to do them all black. No, I'm gonna have some fun with the colors. I'm also using this 3D palette. This is my 24 palette that I just love. I'm going to be doing a swatching video so you can see all the colors on here. But this is um, by Sean on Etsy, and this is called the 24 Premium XL Palette, I believe. And then he sells different kind of inserts for mixing trays. And what I like about his 3D printing is the resin coated. See how bright they are? Most 3D printing is like this, it's uncoated, but he takes the time and the effort to coat this part and all of this, which I really appreciate, which makes it much smoother for getting your paint out. I'm gonna start with the little paint palettes up here because I know I want pink clay in there. If you're not familiar with pink clay, it is my own color with art to basic and it was featured in the American Spirit Pinks. You can see that color in there. And I've also done a video with a leaf and playing with greens and blues with this color. the first color I ever had made or made and it was just it was one of my dreams come true and I think what I'm going to do here is the buff titanium you know that's one of my favorites I'm just going to add it there because these are two of my favorite colors at the moment and if you've watched any of my color mixing, you know that I mix everything with Buff Titanium because it has been a staple on my palette since I put one together. <laughs> and I just splash some color in there. Okay, I'm gonna use French Gray. This is American Journey French Gray. Because this is the ferrule of the brush, so I'm just adding some French Gray to it. And then this is a white pencil, so I'm gonna add some French Gray to that as well. This has a little gold band in the middle, so I'm skipping that. I just want the French gray on the white parts here. Okay, the quill brushes, let me show you the big quill here. Then you can probably see it a little better than on this little tiny quill. A quill brush has a piece of plastic here. Do you see that from this ridge where my thumb is to the point of my index finger here? The brush actually comes down to here, but the quill is wrapped up here. So you can see where the dark handle is. So the brush, the bristles are actually pushed into the brush top. So as you go, you can see that this is brown, this is black, 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 but yet we still want it to look reflective. So what I'm gonna do for that is paint the bristle hairs first. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the brown iron oxide that I have. I like that color for bristles. I'm gonna add a touch of orange.
Now this one, the Raven that I'm using, has three sections of brushes where before it goes into the ferrule. Add a little bit more water to that. And then this one has just two sections. This is my bigger brush, my Da Vinci brush. This handmade journal has Fabriano paper, cold press, 140 pound, I like Fabriano paper a lot. I forgot to tell you that all of the brushes and pencil, I laid down on my brush, on my paper, and I just traced around the elements. And then once you take it off, they will look kind of wonky. So I just take it and straighten them up. And it just takes a couple minutes to do that, but it's a quick way to do your supplies without having to draw them a lot. My pencil has gold on it. A little gold piece right here, so I'm gonna put the gold. Okay, let's do some fun brush colors. Now I know for my mixes, I'm gonna put a Rare Green Earth brush in here because you know I love that color. It's granulating, it's very pretty. And I think I'm gonna do the big one for this. Sorry, I have to turn my paper. I'm gonna leave a little white highlight where I don't paint. And then I have to do up above as well. I'm gonna leave a smaller highlight in there because it is plastic. You could also not worry about the highlights and just use a Posca pen at the end or like a Signo, Signo pen, gel pen. I just usually like to leave them. The next brush I'm gonna use Artemis, which is that purple that I love by Da Vinci. The Rare Green Earth is by Daniel Smith. I would love to hear in the comments how you start your sketchbooks. Do you do something fun or do you just jump in? That's such a pretty color. <laughs> and then this last one, I think I'm going to do it in a mix. Oh, no, I think I'll do Lunar Blue. Lunar Blue is another Daniel Smith. I did all of the Lunars in a video in case you want to see that. From that video, I just fell in love with the Lunar Blue. That's really pretty. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to let those dry and I'm going to work on the lettering. So I'm going to turn my sketchbook so I can do the letters. And I want to make sure that I use all the colors that I've already used because I like things to kind of match. And I know I want a bold letter, so I'm going to start with the blue here, the lunar blue. I kind of go around the outside first, so around the edges and then I will kind of fill in the middle. You want a sharp brush for this. And 
the inking really does a lot of work for you because it keeps your letter nice and clean and straight. <laughs> and I'm just going to dot down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to do one more letter, maybe the zero, the O here. Okay, I'm going to take my brush and just tap some water in here. You know how I like to have splashes. So I want something pale here, so maybe some pink clay. And I think I'm going to do the H. The reason why, my initials are KH, and pink clay was my color. Subliminal what's in there. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of water again. Okay, I'm going to do, let's see, I've got hematite violet genuine which I love and I'm gonna mix a little bit of that with buff titanium the E of this typeface reminds me of Pac-Man <laughs> I know I'm aging myself there <laughs> Okay, while I have this nice color up, this is a nice color for metal. So what I'm going to do is make sure those are dry. Let's come along this outer edge here. And come real fine in the top edge. We're just adding a shine there. Okay, that looks nice. And then I'm going to add just a bit of water to that, and I'm going to shade the pencil as well. So I'm going to have to flip that. And I just want to do the outer edge here on the bottom. Take a little bit of water and just soften that edge there. That looks pretty. See how it just gave it a nice defined edge? That's all I wanted to do. Okay, back to our letters. <laughs> I want to definitely use some rare green earth because I have rare green earth up here. Before it gets too dry, I forgot to wet my little letter here, my E, with the hematite, and now I've got to do rare green earth as well. Okay, I have a lot of rare green earth on here, so I'm going to go up to this brush and do the bottom here. And the skinniest line on the top side here. All I'm trying to do is give a little bit of weight to the shadows there. Okay, I want some of that Artemis. So 
Sorry, I'm not talking. I'm concentrating so hard on these letters. And I think I'm going to do the K in that as well. It's going to be a nice reminder having these colors on here. What I really like to see in my sketchbooks is it's kind of like a time capsule. You know, you get to see what you were doing, what you liked, how your style has evolved. So this will be a nice reminder of the colors, especially as I get to the end of this sketchbook and I get to see what color palette I'm using. I'm getting a little bolder. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I am getting a little bolder and that comes with time for me, which is really nice. It's been nice seeing an evolution kind of thing. Okay, water. Okay, two more. I'm gonna mix hematite and raw sienna. Hematite violet genuine. And then the Van Gogh Raw Sienna. Isn't that fun? Look at those nice letters. <laughs> okay, little drops of color, little drops of water, I mean. The green was not dark enough there, so what I'm going to do is hematite plus a little bit of the rare green earth. That'll give me a nice dark shade. There we go. And then I'm going to use the hematite and Artemis. If you have like a neutral tint, it works really well as well for giving a shade to whatever color you're using. That's a nice color. I'm going to use that to shade the bristles. So I'm going to go along with Feral here and then just pull some colors up. Remember it's shaded down here because it's going into the to the Feral. Since I still have the raw sienna plus a little bit of hematite, I'm just going to shade the gold here, both ends. Around these two half pans, I need to add a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to use Artemis plus Buff Titanium. I usually like purple shadows, I don't know why. So I'm going to put Artemis, but a lot more Buff Titanium. So I just want it to have a kind of a purple cast, like a purple gray. You can see that color. There's Buff Titanium. It's fairly light. Yeah, that's a good color. See how how light that is? So I'm adding a little bit more water. And I'm going to stay fairly close to them. Just add a little bit of shadow. Then under each of the brushes, I'm going to put a little shadow as well. The reason I have space in between the bristles and that is the point sticks up on a lot of mine. So if you look at your brush, it's the tip isn't touching the ground of your paper. That looks good. I deepen this one a little bit here. 
I'm going to take a wash of color here. So I've got some Artemis on my palette. I'm just going to lightly wash it out with more water. And I'm just going to go right up that middle there so that the white's not so bright. There we go. And I'm going to do the same with the green. So that was Rare Green Earth. I'm just going to touch that in the blue as well. And there's my cover. So what I'm going to do is I always date my sketchbooks for the day that I start and then the day that I finish. It's just a way to tell me how long I worked in the sketchbook, although usually I have four or five sketchbooks going at one time. But it lets me know how to when I completed it and how well I did. Throughout the pages, too, I also date them just so that I have a record of when I worked in it and when I didn't. So let me bring you up close so you can have a look at this and see all the detail. So do you see the little shadows? And I, I need to do another layer of that bright white is too wide and too bright still on these two. I'm going to fix that. And there's my pencil. And then here's my word sketchbook. Let's see, can I get it all in? Yep, there you go. Nice and colorful. And I'll probably write favorite palette from August 2023, just so that I remember. So thank you for being here on my first page of my sketchbook. I've had a great time sharing this with you. If you were inspired by the content, please like, comment, or subscribe. It will really help my channel grow. Thanks so much for watching.